Okay, the next section we're going to talk about is Afro layout and flow. Now I'll go to the first slide. When you, when you open up Afro, what I'd like to say will we'll show three different frames within the main frame, within the main dialog box, I'll say it that way. We have what I call the main frame, the animation frame, the output frame. I also have a, the menu toolbar, which all Windows programs have, and the status bar. That's where messages get written out to tell you if Afro's running or stopped, and also things like what units you're currently using show up. So the next slide, in the mainframe, I, we, we've called it the mainframe because it does a lot of things. It shows you the status of Afro, being what the geometry is, what the crack length is, that sort of thing. We have crack length versus cycles, crack growth rate data, initiation plots. So within this mainframe, you can see a lot of different things. Next slide, the status view. The status view, as I said, it shows you what Afro is going to use for the analysis. So every one of these parameters has a default value. So when you open up Afro, it'll come up with the geometry, it'll have it to start with, and you'll have to make changes to it if you want to do it for your problem. So the only thing that's not this default is the spectrum. And you'll see that little thing that says the spectrum will blink. And we're, I don't know if you changed that in this release. I'll yes, that. So that was annoying to a lot of people. So now on the next slide, here's an example of crack length versus cycle. So when you look at the pull down, you can select the crack length, crack length versus cycles. And you'll see several different little tools here. This first tool is supposed to be indicating a stack of papers. And the idea of that is if you select that, it kind of highlights it. And that means I can do multiple analyses, and it shows each one of the analyses on top of the other in different colors. So you can say, well, is this better than that? Or what's the difference between this and that? We make a change and run it again. And you select it again, it erases everything, and then starts over. And then we have, I'll show you some examples, but we have this folder which allows you to set properties and lets you create your own, your own legend for the different runs, whether or not you want black and white and so forth. And then here you have, a, well, this is an eraser, so it erases everything. And then these two icons you'll see in all the different views. And this is a copy, and that's the page. Pretty standard, I think, icons. Now, the, the next slide is your crack growth rate data. When you want to look at your crack growth rate data, we added an additional tool, and it's a, a slider bar up here. And if you notice these double bars, Double bars tell you that if I move my mouse, and you can open back row if you'd like and follow along, but when you hold your mouse over this double bar, you'll see it come up with a different icon. You hold down your um, left button, you can then move those right and left. And the reason was that you might want to have more resolution for that control. You might want to then move this over, depending on how big your window is or your view is. So it allows us to have a little bit more real estate capabilities if we have a limited amount of space. So and now you see here, we have this little icon that's supposed to be a thermometer. And so if you can freeze, you can freeze a different curve and then go to a, a different stress ratio. We'll talk more about that later on in the class as well. And freeze it again and then you can type in or you can click on this top one and type in whatever stress ratio you want to plot, and it will go there immediately once you hit enter. And so that's how you then look at your crack growth rate model and see if your crack growth rate model is going to do for your relationship between delta K and DAM. Next slide. This is an example of your initiation plots. So if you're doing a, a strain life prediction, it shows you your cyclic stress strain curve, and it shows you your strain life curve. Each one of those views are done by just toggling between one and the other within that window. The next slide gives you an idea of the animation frame. That's one of those three frames we talked about. In the animation frame, the default for the classic or wave function geometries just has 
the view of the specimen with the cross section with the crack shown, and as the crack is predicted to grow, it shows how the crack grows. But in the advanced models, we have additional capability because we have several objects. You could have multiple holes, up to four holes. You can have up to two cracks. And the cracks, of course, are not to be the same length. Or one can be at a hole, one can be at the edge, or the internal, it can be any place you want it to be. And so in here we have a specimen properties window. So when you select an object, it shows you what the properties of the object are. So for this case, the panel width is 4, the thickness is 0.25. And then you could grab, drag a hole onto it, or you could drag a corner or a through crack on. But keep in mind, you can't have combinations of corner and through. If you have two corner, you can't put a, a through. If you have a through, you can't put a corner. But you can do up to two cracks. So. The next slide. Here's an example of the output frame. This is just spitting out the output at the user-specified intervals that you select, how often you want to print information. So it shows you your crack size, you A and C length, this is a corner crack, or, or at least a part through crack. Your beta value, which we'll talk about later, is a way of non-dimensionalizing your stress intensity factor. Then your stress ratios, your delta K, and your crack growth rate. It shows you your A over T, or your fraction of the thickness penetrated. It gives you your A over C, your crack shape. It gives you what your max stress is what your stress ratio from the spectrum is, how many cycles, how many passes through the spectrum, all that information is on the output plane. Next slide is menu and toolbars. Now this is pretty standard. All Windows programs you expect to see, you know, input, and it gives you all the input options. And something like within the model, you have classic, advanced, or plugins. And we also have shortcuts. Next slide, the status bar. The status bar, again, is where APRO will send out information to you. For example, here, you'll see it'll tell you the stress state is this, pressure, you know, then we'll have predict finished, and then we'll have over here where you have your uh, units. You can put your mouse over that units where it says English, and then that box appears, and you can select English or metric. And you can just do it back and forth any amount of time you want. Now here's a basic flow chart. This is very basic. This just gives you a rough idea of what goes on. Um, you have a geometry and a loading spectrum. That gives you your stress intensity solution. And then from that, you say, well, would that be above critical? If so, it would fail and stop. If not, then you look at by load interaction model and see what effect the load sequence would have. Then we calculate the crack growth rate, increment the length, check to see exact see my critical crack size. If it does, it stops. If not, it goes back up and goes through again. And again and again and again. It's oversimplified, but that's the basic idea. So that's pretty much the layout and flow.